What's going on, everyone? It's your guy, Pat Bernard, a.k.a. The Gobbler, a.k.a. Pat from Ambler. Welcome into another episode of The Fight's Final. <laughs> the Fight's Final. It always cracks me up because I always usually screw that up. But anyway, I got it right finally. But listen, this was huge for the Phillies. This was huge. Huge win. Phillies win 9-5 to five over the White Sox. Escape in trouble, escape in trouble, which had potential of this going to be one of the worst losses of Philly's history. But, you know, things, they, they tightened up. And what I mean by that is Pento, uh, Ricardo Pento just, again, gave up five runs in a blink of an eye, blink of an eye. He gives up five runs. And just like that, the White Sox are in a game. I mean, it just came down to bases were loaded. All they, the White Sox would need it was a home run. It would have, it would have gave the White Sox a whole new life. Star Wars checking in. He goes, "What's up? I said, What's up, Star Wars?" Wheels throw a gem. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. My man Sal, what's up, dog? He goes, Cassie br broke out tonight. Yeah, Cassie did break out broke out tonight. So before I go any further, real fast, let me get in some of these uh, great sponsors here at Edge of Philly Sports before I go any further because there's a lot to talk about here, a lot. So the good, the bad, and the ugly, if you really want a name for this Phillies game. But real fast, let me break this down and right away, right off the bat here. Guys, the fight final returns to the Streetlight Kitchen and Bar you see it right there on your screen, 500, 5400, Fernet Boulevard, Drexel Hill, PA, 19026, Holiday Inn Suites. Come hang out with all your, the Fighting Finals crew, me, Sal, Mike Lauro, Big Al, and of course, the Don of Mayfair, Maddie B. So guys, we'll all be in the tents there starting at 2.30. Come on out. It's going to be a good time. You don't want to miss it. It's a great place to eat. You guys know me. I love my eating. It's a great place to hang out, eat your food, hang out with the family. Um, and I believe, that's right, my, my home supervisor will be in attendance. So uh, if you want to see me get lashed out at by the home foreman, you could come out and hang out with me. Uh, but other than that, real fast, here goes Dolan's Bar, 24 East Sellers Avenue, Ridley Park. Come on out. It's going to be a good time. There's music giveaways, all that, you know, music, great, you know, great prizes, all that stuff. And, of course, uh, again, Big things happen in May, May 25th. John Crock, Mickey Morandini are going to be in the house for Wiffle Ball Mania. So, guys, you heard the man, the legend himself. You know, no one, like Sal said, no one could rock a mold like this man could. And uh, and he's a great, great, funny, funny man, you know, uh, doing it when he does play-by-play. -play. So, guys, come check him out. Uh, of course, then you have... Our other great sponsor here at Edge of Philly Sports, David R. Cherry Esquire, work compensation, medical vehicle accident, personal injury, criminal law. Hit up my man, David R. Cherry Esquire, 610-565-0300. And real quick, guys, before we go any further, a couple more. We go to Cherry Ticket Sound. Guys, great prices, no hidden fees, sports, concerts, theaters, SharedTicketSound.com, family operating and owned since 1946. Guys, get the discount price by using that promo code EOP10. Save yourself a bundle. And, guys, like I keep mentioning every time I do a show with PAM and the AM, here, everywhere, <clears throat> anytime I get an opportunity, guys, look what Philly Sports Trips hooking up. This is the summer of a lifetime. They, they're hooking up trips to Chicago around 4th of July weekend. You're not you're not going to miss that. Ridley Park. So, again, you know that's a, 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 a destination spot. You know, that is a bucket list field park to be at but not just there you guys want to go down and make a bus trip down to baltimore you do that june 15th fenway park they got it all going on of course you guys know about the open day birds trip they're going down to brazil so you get like i said if you're a union fan checking this out a union fan don't worry the you, you know, philly sports trips covers it all union sixers phillies flyers eagles it, listen my man vince uh who, who's the head engineer over there takes care of everybody but no more further ado, let's get into this game, and let's start out from the top. Let's go right into it, but before I do that, let me get, you know, I obviously see the 
the text board is lined up. So let's get right into it. Uh, Star Wars checking in. Uh, Pinito really did bad. Yes, he did. Uh, I'm going to talk about him. Uh, Jeff, Jeff checking in. He goes, time for Batinto and Solo to go. I totally agree. Getting some Austin pitching. Rojas, three hits. Cassianos, three hits. Yeah, the offense has stacked up 16 hits, 16 runs in the last two games. And I get it. The White Sox, I mean, they, they are now on the new franchise record of the one of their worst starts in baseball history. And I get that, and I completely understand it. However, and, and if people are going to tell me, oh, the, the Phillies are only beating up the White Sox, who are they? Listen, you're not always going to play the good teams every 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 series. And number two, if the good teams are taking care of the bad teams, so what are we complaining about? Be happy. Sal checking in again. He goes, these starting pitchers are keeping, keeping out uh, – these starting pitchers keep doing each other uh, right. So I guess that means Dolph throws no hitter tomorrow and Ranger throws a perfect game. Hey, listen, Sal, I'd love to see that. I would love to see a, a, a perfect game from either or. No, let's do. You know, and with that offense, he'll cook right through him, or he should. We keep sweeping these White Sox. We can not sweep the White Sox. Yeah, we can. We definitely can. So again, like I said, I, I want to you know give my explanation of the game. So it starts out pretty good, right? The Phillies have everything going for them. Again, Wheeler was just wheeling and dealing. I mean, you seen it. You just seen his 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 command, right? You saw his sinkers, his cutters, his fastballs. I mean, they were unhittable. He purposely, if you saw, every time he would start a pitch, majority of the time he would throw a ball up out of the strike zone, thinking, having the batters thinking that he had no command whatsoever, and he would dial in to that strike zone. And then just, again, it would just hit low sinkers, high sinkers, you know, splitters, sliders, whatever. He did a number. He did a number. And so, um, I don't want to butcher the guy's name. And I'm sorry if I do that, but the White Sox pitcher, starting pitcher, right? He comes up, he's throwing. You see him, he was trying to work the corners in the beginning of this game. He was really trying to, he only had, he didn't have a fastball. Another guy didn't have a fastball in his repertoire. He only had sinkers and sliders. Like there was nothing special about his game. And he was trying to work the corners. And Brandon Marsh read him like a book and crushes it deep down center. Deep down center. He crushes a ball. In comes Nikki Cass, Nikki Cassianos right afterwards with a triple. Again, the Phillies now up 2-0. Phillies would get three nothing, and I'm telling you, circling back to Nick Cassianos, what a performance! Say eh? three for three, three hits, two RBIs, a walk. I mean, he did everything. Even Rojas, we gotta give the Rojas here. Three for four. Again, this team reminded me of what they were doing last year. When one guy got cold, the other guy gets hot. So I don't worry when guys go through a cold streak because I know at some point they're going to bounce back. So, again, key moments of, of today's game. Nick Cassianos, three for three, a perfect game for this guy. As a matter of fact, what does Star Wars say? Perfect game. Nick Cassianos was on fire. He did everything right tonight. He did everything you want him to do. Small ball, small ball, small ball. Getting on base. Getting on base. Yeah, you know what? I, you know, I, excuse me. I, I mentioned about Nick Castellanos. I mentioned about 
Rojas, but I forgot about this man right here. Star Wars, thank you. Because Turner was on fire. Turner now extends that hitting streak of his to nine games. Nine straight games he has a hit. He had two tonight. Again, you know, Turner, Cassiano's plate discipline is the key. Reading their pitches, taking their pitches, and I get it. <laughs> this is a this is a bad White Sox team. But you know what you do with bad teams? You get momentum builders, confidence boosters. That's what these kind of games are for. So when you do face those tough teams like the Braves and all those teams above 500, you can level the playing field now. Now you have confidence. So, I mean, like I said, it was really sharp tonight, really sharp with your fighting fills, with the fightings. It just, just a, a great game by them. Just again, just just read everything that the White Sox were throwing out to them and making adjustments. Making adjustments. They were, I mean, again, like I said, that kid Sakura who was pitching for the White Sox. And like I said, he didn't have nothing special to his game. He didn't have nothing special. He just was painting alongside the strike zone. Most of his pitches were inside. And the Phillies caught on that. The Phillies offense caught on it quick. And they made their adjustments. And they tattooed that kid. And, and their bullpen didn't do them any, you know, they didn't say no grace either because they got thumped too. So, I mean, but, you know, let, let's talk about the ugly part about this game. Let's talk about the ugly part. Let's talk about Ricardo Benito. Ricardo, what happened, me? What happened? I mean, Sir Anthony comes in. It went from good, bad to ugly because Sir Anthony came in before Ricardo. Sir Anthony came in. I mean, he, he just made it out. Through the you know through through the thick of my teeth, he just made it out, and then Pinto comes in, and Pinto just gets thumped. He got thumped. I mean, he was giving up hit after hit after hit, and like I said, this game with bases loaded, you know, I've seen this movie plenty of times, where this you know the Phillies were on a nine zero cushion, a nine zero cushion. And I thought this team was going to just chalk it up. Yeah, how about that, too, Star Wars? You know, heading into this game, Zach Wheeler is 0-3 on the season because he has no run support. And tonight, the bats broke out. The bats were there. The walks were there. The, 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 the plus... Their vision at the plate were there. Was there? It was good. It was good for the, your fighting fills. Huge win tonight, nine to five. Again, Jose Alvarado comes in and pitches one pitch, and, and then kind of gets them out you know, harm's way. <laughs> yes, 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 Sal. He goes. I know who's getting sent down when Taiwan Walker comes back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, bye-bye, Mr. Pinto. See you later. Thanks for coming. I mean, sheesh. Sheesh. Um, so, listen, real fast, uh, let me go, uh, again, gave you guys some of the pitching aspects. Let me go through some of the bats. Again, the bats were really good. Majority of this game, Turner, oh, for, you know, he only had a walk. He had two Ks. Wasn't doing anything on fire. Uh Bohm had, you know, a couple hits. Turner had a couple hits. Rojas, three for four. I mean, your two big bats of the night were Rojas and Nick Cassianos. 
I mean, after that, uh, I mean, you could really try and pick it apart. I mean, the guys weren't right, really letting the world on fire. Harper, I mean, two for five at the plate with an RBI. Remuto, one hit, one for three at the plate, two or two runs. <laughs> um, and how about this cool thing too? Brandon Marsh only you know he you know he only had the home run in the beginning, two RBIs. Wasn't really doing much after that, but the play that you know he goes to go trying to catch that foul ball, and then he he missed it and it went over the kid's head and he told and he pretty much told the kid he's like the next foul you know any foul ball I get it's going to come right to you, and he gives the kid the foul ball, which that that foul ball is going to live in that kid's memory for the rest of his life. Brandon Marsh just made that kid's childhood memory for the rest of his life. Think about that. That was really cool. I thought that was really cool. But, I mean, again, the only guy who didn't hit tonight would be, uh, if you're looking at Cole spots, Schwarber and Remuto. But they still, I mean, still drove walks. They still, you know, got on base. So I'm not concerned. You know, they, they, they didn't hit you know, on paper. But they still played pretty well. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that's a big one too. And his feeling's really good too. Nicky Cass is his feeling is just stepped up tremendously. And again, man, it was and it's it's fun when 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 Rojas gets on base, man. If if you're a if you're a, the opposing pitcher, you better have your head like an owl, swivering. Uh, you know, all the time because that dude, he'll steal, he'll steal a couple bases. He's not playing around. He's really good. Like his the speed on this kid is unreal. Like he'll go from one to third with no problem. If it's a deep ball left to, if it's a single, all of it, you know, if it's a double all the way down to the right side of the field, he's gunning it at home. He's fun to watch. Like I said, he gets a more of a consist bat. That that's 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 uh, it's a too early to say that's MVP material if he has more of a consistent bat because he's got the fielding he's got the length he's got the reach he's got the speed that's all he needs is a consistent bat and he's going to be just fine so real fast we're going to go around the league I'm going to take a look at some box scores for you guys going around the MLB. So hold on one second as we get ready to do that. All right, all right, all right. What's going on, guys? Uh, we are going to go around the horn a little bit. We're going to go around the bases. So with that being said, let's go up to um, let's go to Chicago with the Cubbies taking care of the Marlins five seven at the top of the ninth. So the Cubs looks like they're about to take this one. The Royals down 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 by two runs. The Orioles are winning nine to seven. The Manners going to uh, going up there up there in Colorado. Winning seven to zero right now, uh, but top of the bottom of the seventh, bottom of six rather, top of the fifth. The Blue Jays are up four nothing over the San Diego Padres. Tampa Bay Rays are winning right. Uh, Tampa Bay Rays won. They won today over the Yanks two nothing. You have the Twins winning at home against the Tigers four to three. <coughs> Excuse me. You have the Brewers win 12 to 5 over the Cardinals. You have the uh, Nats. Nationals win over the Astros 5 to 4. Uh, I saw a little bit of this game today. You have the Mets and Dodgers. The Mets won today 6 to 4 over there out there in LA. You had Boston go up in Pittsburgh winning 4 to 2. You had the D backs losing to the Giants 7 to 3 there. You have the Guardians winning 6-3 at home against the Athletics. 
You had the Cincinnati Reds winning against the Angels, seven to five. The Braves, man, it pains me, but taken to the champions. The Braves win at five to two over the Texas Rangers. No, oh, and they just finished. So the Cubbies would win. Oh, that was in an earlier game. Uh, so they're playing the back to back. They're playing a makeup game. So that would be um, the one. Uh, the Marlins won three to two. So that would be your makeup game. Uh, run the league. Star Wars checking is the fish are not that good. Yeah, I and you know it's crazy. I thought they would be that team that took a step forward there. Star Wars. But boy, was I wrong. I was wrong. So, um, again, real fast, though, let me give you guys my bottom, you know, the Broad Street bottom line. Let me get into that for you. As I quickly try to find that. All right, guys, my Brawl Street bottom line and my Brawl Street bottom line. That, so my, my, my giveaway is the offense has been clicking. The little offense has been red hot. And you're taking care of a bottom feeder. This is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to spank the bottom feeders. You go home tomorrow, you can, and you sweep the, 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 red, the, the White Sox. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. You put up 16 runs in the last two days. Really good stuff from your Phillies. And it's it's just it's just really nice to uh it's just really nice to see from the fighting Phils right now. It's just really, really nice to see. The fighting Phils are doing it all. They're playing good baseball against a bad team. They're you know, things are gonna get ready to change. We all know that. They're gonna go out to Cincinnati and all that stuff. So it's it's whatever, but right now you got to be happy from the fighting fields of what you saw, playing good good baseball right now. So, um, but guys, I, I want to say thank. Uh, Darth Pooh, I get it. It's the Sox. I get it. They're a bad baseball team, but this is what you're supposed to do. This is what good teams do. They take care of the bad ones. And you saw it. Things could have. This could have been a loss, but it's okay. We won. It's whatever. You continue building your confidence up. Darth Poo checking is right. I'm not patting anyone on the head for what they should be doing. Okay, so your and your point is, I mean, they they're taking care of a bad team, and you're supposed to be doing that. I mean, just a few weeks ago, everyone already had the panic button where he pushed out on this team. I, I mean, I don't know what you're what you're trying to get at. As Wheeler was fantastic, yes, yes, Wheeler was fantastic. Pena was was char trash. Panita was trash. He was horrible. He was horrible on the hill. Like I'm, I was begging for him to get off the hill. I mean nothing. I mean he was giving out Girl Scout cookies over the plate. But anyway, guys, I know. Like I said, this fight in finals. The fine finals, you know, is, is is a great show. We, you know, we're going to continue doing this uh, moving forward, all that good stuff. So, uh, I don't know. So, but yeah, it's it's you know, we're going to keep on rocking this forward. But anyway, guys, final thoughts on on the Phillies. I want to hear from you guys. Uh, this team is looking good, looking solid. They're playing good baseball. Guys are finding their hits. And, and, and okay, like I said, they're not going to be facing 
bad teams all the time. But again, this is the way you build confidence. If you remember last season when they played the teams like the Braves and the Mets, teams that usually give them their fits, they were playing against bottom teams right beforehand. And then they would handle business against those upper, you know, those upper echelon teams. You have to be happy. You have to be happy what you're seeing from the fighting fills. <coughs> Darth who is saying if the Sox is a stepping stone, they need a, then a great win. Otherwise, it's okay. It's a good win, dude. You should be happy. You should be happy with the win. They battled. They fought. You know, like I said, things could have got ugly. And, and this Phillies team is hitting right now. They're clicking on offense. So th this 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 Phillies team is just is just again just taking steps forward. And again. I think they're going to pull out the broomsticks tomorrow. I think they're going to get the win tomorrow. No on the hill. Mr. Freeze, are you kidding me? He'll be handling some business tomorrow. I just need the bats to come through. And I think Schuber is due. Schuber is due to have a big game tomorrow. I think he's going to crush it tomorrow. So, what like I say, guys? I want to say thank you to everyone who's checked into the show here tonight. Uh, this, this has been great. Again, once again, you guys can check me out doing my thing. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Star Wars. And it's the Fanatics birthday. Yes. We can never forget about the Fanatics birthday coming up tomorrow. Huge, huge celebration. All the mascots come out. Fang, Gritty, Franklin the dog. I mean, they all swoop. Mike Lauro, they all come out. All the mascots. All the mascots come out and play. It's great. But anyway, guys, like I said, man, uh, Phillies, what a huge win. Again, winning 9-5 to five over the Chicago White Sox. We'll see if they can pull out the broomsticks tomorrow. But, guys, speaking of Mike Lauro, he's got you covered tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock you know after the phillies put you know after the phillies game he's got you covered and um for me i'm going to let you guys go and you guys have a great great night